Good morning. How is everyone? My name is Rod Brown, and um, very excited this morning. Um, I had this eloquent uh, topic that we're going to talk about that I had to push to the side. Uh, by the way, you're on the Lead or Lose call. Uh, Lead or Lose is sponsored by ShareNote.com, which is an electronic health record system specifically for the behavioral health care industry. It manages their entire practice. So go check out ShareNote.com when you have a chance. So I'm here in Orlando, Florida, and I would be remiss if I didn't spend some time talking about vision because I'm in a place that was created um, as a result of a visionary. And as entrepreneurs, you have to be a visionary um, when being a leader. It's a key component a key quality that you must have. And the cool thing is you can develop that quality, you can develop that skill if, in fact, you're not a visionary. Uh, What's interesting is in our adult lives, for whatever reason, we've um, kind of shut down our ability to um, be visionaries. As kids, our imagination ran wild. We saw ourselves as superheroes. Uh, we could run through brick walls. We can leap tall buildings. Um, you know, we could run 400 miles an hour. You know, we could be in our living room, but at the same time be in the Sahara Desert. So as kids, our, our vision, our imagination was incredible. But as we became adults, for whatever reason, uh, that vision or that imagination started to slow and started to shrink. And it's probably because of the responsibilities as adults, because of all the noise that we have in our head, uh, because of all the things that we're trying to get done, um, has pretty much stifled our ability to use our imagination. But we're going to fix that this morning because we're going to talk about ways to jumpstart your imagination and, and, or ways to, to use your imagination. So we, we, we almost have to get back to, you know, that 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 wild and crazy limitless view of the world when we use our imagination like we did as a child, okay? Um, Again, I'm in Orlando, Florida, and um, unless you live under a rock, when when you hear Orlando, you think Disney World. And Disney World was created uh, by a guy named Walt Disney, of course, who initially uh, was a cartoonist. He was an animator. That was his passion, just drawing. And, 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 and again, he wasn't good because he could draw. This guy was, was great because he, he drew a, a lot. He drew a great deal. So the, the first lesson is whatever your purpose is, whatever your passion is, do it a whole lot. Malcolm Gladwell said that we need to do it 10,000 hours to master it. So do it a whole lot. And, you, and if you, you may be thinking, well, what is my passion? What is my purpose? Um, and, and I'll boil that down to what brings you the most joy. If that thing that brings you the most joy, you're probably the most passionate about it. And passion is that thing that will get you through the tough times. It's that thing that will get you through um, the moment when you say, you know what, I'm done with this. The moment when you're ready to quit, um, your passion won't allow you to quit. That thing that brings you the most joy won't allow you to quit. Oftentimes, you do it um, so much, and you love doing it so much, it never, ever feels like work. It's it's effortless. So I would start there if you're questioning what your passion is or what your purpose is. So this guy, he was a cartoonist, Walt Disney. He was an animator. Those things were his his passions. Now, he had a, he had a flair or, or a bug for um, that of an entrepreneur, um, however, again, he just liked to draw. He just liked to, you know, you know, turn um, um, things, um, inanimate objects, into something that looked animated. When you flip the edges of paper um, along over and over and over again, um, based on the little drawings and the little distinct um, uh, movements that he made with his drawings, just that whole process of animation. So um, he he actually. I learned that he co-founded Walt uh, or Disney World. I'm sorry, he co-founded Disney World uh, with his brother Roy Disney, and and we talked about how you know no one has ever done anything great alone, but oftentimes we don't hear about the people that um, help bring those great ideas uh, to fruition. And 
somebody like whenever people talk about Walt Disney World, when they talk about Disneyland and all the different theme parks, they talk about what the founder, uh, Walt Disney, but he had a co-founder. He had a right-hand man, and that was his brother, Roy Disney. So make sure you have a right-hand person. Make sure you have someone, again, that's in your camp that can help bring your vision to pass. Another interesting fact about uh, the the inspiration for Disney World, uh, it came from an existing theme park. It came from an existing theme park that was in Argentina. And um, this place was, um, it, it, it inspired uh, Walt Disney to, you know, create something very similar, but on a grander scale. The difference between sight and vision is sight is something that you can see. Um, vision is something that uh, you employ sight, but um, vision is, is, is not stating the obvious. It's going beyond the obvious. And having vision um, will ultimately, I believe, um, point directly to a legacy. I believe you can have sight and not have legacy. But when you have vision, you will ultimately have legacy. When we talk about Disneyland, Disney World, and all the other theme parks, when we talk about Mickey Mouse, we talk about Goofy, that's legacy. Because those things were created in the 1930s, 1940s, 1950s. But we're still talking about those things today. And our grandkids and our great-grandkids will probably be talking about um, those things as well, talking about those characters, going to the, the, the Disney theme parks. That's vision because legacy is tied to that. In a second, we're going to talk a little bit more about legacy. So he was inspired by an idea that already existed, but he employed vision to that, that idea versus sight. Another great example of that is McDonald's. When the McDonald's brothers started, they were happy with having two or three stores, but the guy that sold them milkshake machines, Ray Kroc, he had vision, and he could see that model going all over the world. He could see beyond the three or four stores that they initially had. His vision was much further or saw much further than their sight. So another lesson from Walt Disney is be inspired by others' ideas because that same idea, right, that person had sight when it came to that particular idea. But you take that same idea and you can have a vision which will make it much bigger and much grander. And as I stated, an evidence of, of something that was birthed from vision versus sight is that it will have a legacy. Vision is defined as um, having a, a vivid uh, mental image, um, especially uh, a fancy for one of the future. Again, it's seeing beyond the obvious. You know, when we talk about future, we can't see the future, right? We have an idea of what what might lie in the future, but we don't see it. So vision is, is almost futuristic. And if, if vision is futuristic, if we believe that, <clears throat> then or, in order for us to tap into that, we have to use what? Our imagination. And our, our imagination is so very important. So there are three things that I want you to do when it comes to your imagination. First of all, I don't want you to have any limits when it comes to using your imagination. You need to, um, if, 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 you're, if your thoughts are very, very busy, if you have a lot going on in your head, <clears throat> take some imagination, uh, imagination time. Um, pick 15 minutes out of a day. Pick 30 minutes out of a day. Um, go into a room where it's completely dark. Um, the only thing you want to have in there is a single sheet of paper and a pen or a pencil, and that's it. You want it to be very, very quiet, um, and it'd be, it'd be great if you actually fell asleep um, because that means that your, your mind quieted to the point where you couldn't relax that much to fall asleep. But you want to quiet your mind. One of the ways to quiet your mind is to count backwards from, say, 50 or 99, or you pick a number, but count backwards. And when you're counting backwards, try to imagine the number. So if I'm at 10, I'm, I imagine a 10 in my head, right? And so that will quiet your mind. And, and then when your mind is quiet, just let it run all over the place when it comes to thinking about whatever it is you're in there to think about. So if you're in there to think about creating um, a new product, um, let your mind just go 
you know, just run all over the place when it comes to creating that new product. And then write down the ideas, you know, with that pen or pencil and, and that sheet of paper that you took in the room. But so take time to um, um, use your imagination and have no limits on that. Again, I touched on it earlier, but be inspired by others' ideas. Um, there was actually a, a, a patent for a mousetrap that works so much better than the mousetraps that we have today with the lever that comes over and hits the mouse upside the head and knocks them out and then the mouse dies and you got to somehow pick it up and get rid of it. And if you're not afraid to do that or you don't get, you know, uh, freaked out by a dead mouse being in it, there's, there's actually a better mousetrap that was patented. Uh, that mousetrap was not marketed well. Um, I think the patent ran out on, on that better mousetrap. Uh, but my point here is a mousetrap was created and somebody created a better mousetrap. It is very, very possible to create better mousetraps. Again, the McDonald brothers, they saw three or four stores. Ray Kroc saw thousands of stores. So when it comes to your imagination, be inspired by others' ideas. Don't copy other people's ideas. Just be inspired. Uh, by other people's ideas. Another great example of that is the ad exec who came up with the Nike slogan. And and he he actually read a book, and the book um, was called The Executor's Song. And it was about a guy that was being executed. At the very end, uh, they, they apparently were, were taking their time executing him. And so at the very end, he, he just, you know, kind of yelled to the executors, just do it, just get it over with. Which is kind of a bold statement when you're when you're about to be executed, but he said just do it. And so the the uh, ad exec that came up with the Nike slogan "Just Do It" was inspired by that book, and of course built an entire ad campaign, one of the most successful um, ever um, in history. And then when it comes to using your imagination, always ask the question, "What's beyond?" So let's say you're 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 processing you know, a, a new idea for a new product or a new service, and you get to that part, and you say, oh, this is it. Well, ask, ask, ask a question, what's beyond that that you came up with? What's beyond this product or service that you came up with? Well, you said it's it's this. Well, can it be bigger than that? Can it be a different color? Can it be um, used by more than one target market? Um, so constantly ask, what's beyond? What's beyond? What's beyond? So you get to a point where there's nothing beyond. But your ideas can be as crazy or as, as, as wild. I was talking to somebody um, yesterday. I'm on the board, and, and we were talking about the executive director coming up with crazy ideas. And I, and, and I, try to, yeah, I love crazy ideas because, um, you know, Alexander Graham Bell, he had a crazy idea at some point. Uh, Ford had a crazy idea at some point. Um, Carnegie had crazy ideas at some point. Um, ben Franklin had crazy ideas at some point, or at least what people thought were crazy. So, you know, crazy ideas. Are, are cool. So have no limits when it comes to your imagination. Be inspired um, by other people's ideas. Don't copy them. Just be inspired. And then ask the question, what's beyond that which I came up with? Last, again, evidence of um, vision is legacy. Four key things when it comes to legacy. First of all, you have to know the legacy that you want to leave. Sam Walton knew the legacy he wanted to leave. He wanted to leave all of these discount stores, again, all over the world. He he he, he started in the Midwest, but he, he saw beyond the Midwest, right? So know the legacy you want to live. Then you want to live the legacy you want to leave, right? So you want to live it. So if you believe in this, this vision, this so-called vision and, and the imagination that you employed, um, you have to live that, okay? Choose who will carry out or carry on your legacy. Choose who will carry on your legacy. Um, who will you place your vision uh, in the hands of when you're not here? And, again, legacy, right, is, is when we're not here. Um, uh, T.D. Jake said once that, um, you know, his, his great, 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 great grandkids are going to walk by a picture of him and say, you know what, I never met the man, but Papa was bad because I'm still basking in his success generations down the road. Right, so choose who will carry your legacy on. Very important. And lastly, make sure you pass the baton. There can't be a legacy if I don't pass the baton. So if I'm in this race and I'm running hard, and at some point in time it's time for me 
to move on so that this legacy can build so, much, so someone else's imagination, someone else's vision can take it to the next level and see even much further than mine, I have to be able to pass the baton. And if you're running a race and if you've ever seen people um, in that in that uh, 4 by 100 and they reach for the baton and the one person puts it in the other person's hand but he doesn't let go and so they got to kind of struggle for the baton, that's not passing the baton. Pass that baton to the next person that can take your legacy to the next step and to the next level. Man, time flies when we're having fun. Um, coming to you from Orlando, Florida, where vision is all around us. Thank you so much for listening. I send you blessings. Have a great day. <laughs>